Hey everyone, it's Henry from Carbon Crowd. So in this video, I want to discuss a statistic that gets pitched by a ton of microgreens growers, which is that microgreens have 40 times the amount of vitamins and minerals as the adult plant. You know, now if you're watching this video, you're probably already familiar with what microgreens are, and there's a good chance that you've already heard this claim. Um, but just in case you don't know, they're the baby versions of vegetables that you're likely familiar with, like broccoli, cabbage, radish, peas, arugula, etc, etc. Um, you harvest them when they're really young, um, they have super vibrant flavors and colors, and you know, they're tender, and they're going to punch you know, way above their weight in terms of nutritional content. But exactly how hard are they going to punch? Is it really true that microgreens have 40 times the amount of vitamins and minerals as the adult plant? Or is this just something that growers say to get sales? You know, the truth is that it's actually a little bit of both. Now, you know, I myself am actually guilty of using this statistic. They can contain up to four to 40 times the amount of vitamins and minerals as the mature plant. So microgreens are loaded with four to 40 times the amount of vitamins as the adult plant. Because, you know, it does get people's attention. Um, and most people's knowledge of nutrition stops at vitamins and minerals. So frankly, they're just gonna react to that kind of a claim. So uh, where did this claim come from? The claim comes from a study that was published on July 19th, 2012 in the Journal of Agricultural and Food Chemistry and involved researchers from the University of Maryland as well as the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Um, so the first thing I want to mention about this study is that it actually doesn't look at mineral content. You know, and I've personally made that mistake of including minerals in that 40 times statistic, so sorry about that. There's just something about saying vitamins and minerals that just kind of rolls off the tongue. You know, but fortunately, you know, there are several studies that deal with mineral content specifically. And the results of those studies generally show that microgreens are going to be loaded with a disproportionate amount of useful minerals, you know, as one would expect. For example, there was a 2017 research article from Idaho State University that looked at mineral concentrations in broccoli microgreens, which are some of my favorite, and uh, they found that cultivation method in medium did have a major effect on mineral concentrations, but found that you know regardless of how they were grown, the microgreens would have larger con uh, quantities of magnesium, manganese, copper, and zinc, which is pretty cool. And not surprisingly, they found that compost-grown microgreens had higher mineral levels for phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, manganese, zinc, iron, calcium, sodium, and copper. Now, from their calculations, they estimate that microgreens are roughly 1.73 times more nutritious in terms of mineral content, meaning that you would need to eat 42% less massive microgreens to obtain the same amount of minerals from the mature broccoli, which is just pretty amazing. Um, so it's definitely loaded with minerals, but it's important to keep our stats straight and not to mix up the numbers. So let's get back to the claim that microgreens have 40 times the vitamins as the adult plant. Is it really true, or do people just say this to get sales? The truth is that it's partially accurate, but somewhat misleading. You know, when people hear that something has 40 times the vitamins, they tend to react because, you know, it's a shocking statistic that's pretty much going to get, like, anyone's attention. So. What you need to understand about this study is that the 40 times statistic does not apply to every microgreen in the study or every vitamin. It's literally the most favorable ratio that they found out of all the microgreens and vitamins. What would be more honest to say is that microgreens have been shown to contain from 4 to 40 times the amount of vitamins as the adult plant. You know, and that this varies based on the variety of microgreen and the vitamin that you're talking about. So specifically, the study looked at levels of vitamin C, K and E, and carotenoids like uh, beta carotene, veolizanthin, and uh, lutein and zeanthin, which they bunched together for this study. You know, and they found that red cabbage contained over 40 times the amount of vitamin E compared to the adult plant, which is where that upper ratio comes from. So I'm not going to go over all the raw data from the study since there are 25 microgreens included, you know, but the various tables and charts are definitely worth examining in more detail if you want to improve your pitch you know, or to just provide your customers with more accurate information for a specific microgreen that you're growing. You know, so there's a lot that you could talk about with this study, but in terms of just the, some of the generally interesting conclusions, you know, they found that dark green and bright red microgreens tended to have way more vitamin E, while yellow microgreens tended to have less. But that overall, microgreens 
are just like a much better source for vitamin E than the mature vegetables. For vitamin C, they found that micro red cabbage had six times the concentration of mature red cabbage, or 2.6 times, you know, if you're comparing to the USDA data sets. Now, uh, garnet amaranth, a very pretty variety, um, also had much higher concentrations than its mature counterpart. China rose radish, uh, opal basil, and opal radish all had higher levels um, than broccoli, which is known to be an excellent source of vitamin C. You know, in general, they found that, you know, the total ascorbic acid was higher in microgreens than the mature counterparts, which no surprise there. So with the exception of golden peas and popcorn shoots, they found that all 25 microgreens were gonna be an excellent source of beta carotene. They found that cilantro contained three times more than the adult plant. And amazingly, that red cabbage had 260 times the amount. Like, that's just crazy. They also found that microgreens tended to have higher concentrations of macular pigments like lutein and zeanthine, which you can only get from vegetable sources. Your body accumulates it um, from those sources, but that's the only source. So it's pretty interesting that you can get such high amounts from the microgreens. And they found that micro cilantro had 28.6 times greater concentration and red cabbage, of course, having 11.2 times. You know, red sorrel and red garnet amaranth were also uh, notable. Levels of veal xanthan, veal, you know, I can't pronounce that. You know, I'm just not, I'm just gonna stop trying. Um, levels of that varied widely between 25 microgreens, but cilantro, of course, um, was notable, having five times the amount as a mature grain. So for vitamin E, they looked at levels of both alpha tocopherol and gamma tocopherol, which are just kind of two different types of vitamin E. Now, green daikon radish had insanely high levels of both with cilantro, again, of course, um, opal radish and peppercrass also being notable. Um, and obviously you can't forget red cabbage, which was shown to contain over 40 times the amount of vitamin E as its mature counterpart, which is where that 40 times stat comes from. So that covers the important conclusions from the study. You know, hopefully after watching this, you have a better understanding of how that four to 40 times claim breaks down and won't use it in a misleading way to suggest that all microgreens have 40 times the vitamins as mature counterparts, which is simply not accurate. You know, and at the end of the day, microgreens are vitamin and mineral powerhouses, and we really just don't need to make exaggerated claims to get that point across. You know, and as good as all of that stuff is, and it is really good, it's actually a pretty small part of what makes microgreens, particularly the cruciferous microgreens, so healthy. You know, the more I read about the phenolic compounds and the glucosinolates that are contained in cruciferous greens, you know, the more I realize that these compounds are really what make microgreens a unique superfood compared to like other food trends that we've seen. You know, the public isn't very educated when it comes to phytonutrients, but in my opinion, you know, these are largely what are responsible for the extensive health benefits of microgreens. So there's really a lot that you could say about phenolics and glucosinolates. Um, you know, for example, like there was some study that came out on polyphenols not that long ago with grapes that really made everyone go nuts where they were like, wow, if you eat grapes, it's like having natural sunscreen, but this stuff is in your microgreens. And then if you're talking about the cruciferous microgreens, you also have the glucosinolates. And like, like I said, there's so much that you could say about both of these that they really do deserve their own video, which I will be releasing at some point in the future. So, you know, hopefully you found this video to be helpful and informative. You know, if you enjoyed the video, then hit that like button, um, subscribe, and turn on the notifications so that you can keep getting more content. See you later.